Hi, I'm Dr. Incognito. In this video, we're going to discuss the quotient rule. So the quotient rule for finding derivatives. So we want to be able to take the derivative of a function of the form f of x over g of x. So this is a quotient, the rule that allows us to find the derivative of a function that has this form is the quotient rule. And the rule goes like this. The derivative of the quotient is the bottom function times the derivative of the top function minus the reverse. The top function times the derivative of the bottom function divided by the bottom function squared. So there's the formula. Uh, let's look at a few examples and uh, see how uh, it works. First example, the derivative of the function e to the x over x squared minus 1. So according to the formula, the derivative is the bottom, x squared minus 1, times the derivative of the top. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And then minus, it's very important, that's the minus sign, and it makes the formula a little bit unfriendly. You have to put this piece first, and then this piece second. You can't switch them like in the product rule, which had a plus. So it's a minus top, uh, sorry, bottom uh, times derivative of top minus the reverse. The top function, e to the x, times the derivative of the bottom function. The derivative of x squared minus 1 is 2x. And then divided by the bottom function is x squared minus 1. And then we can clean this up a little bit. Uh, the numerator is e to the x times the polynomial x squared minus 2x minus 1. And the denominator is x squared minus 1. Uh, this polynomial uh, does not factor. And so uh, this is not going to simplify at all. And that's our final answer. Uh, next example, let's find the derivative of a rational function. So suppose we want the derivative of 3x divided by 1 plus x to the fourth. Uh, using the quotient rule, we have the top times the derivative, sorry, the bottom times the derivative of the top, which is 1 plus x to the fourth times 3, minus uh, the top 3x times the derivative of the bottom which is 4x cubed divided by the bottom squared. And then if we simplify the numerator, the numerator simplifies to it's 3 plus 3x to the fourth minus, um, it looks like that's 12x to the fourth. And the denominator stays the same. And then the numerator simplifies to 3 minus 9x to the fourth. 3 minus 9x to the fourth divided by 1 plus x to the fourth squared. So there is our derivative. <clears throat> uh, one last example. No, actually, let's try two more examples. Although the next one is sort of a non-example, the quotient rule is a little bit complicated. So let's take that last example and turn it upside down. And we'll see that we could avoid the quotient rule sometimes. Sometimes it's possible to algebraically rewrite the function in such a way as to not need uh, the quotient rule. So now that there's just a single term on the bottom, uh, we could divide the bottom into each term in the numerator and thereby obtain a sum of power functions and use the power rule 
instead of the quotient rule. So, in other words, this function is 1 over 3x plus x to the fourth over 3x. We could rewrite it that way, uh, just dealing with addition of fractions with the same denominator. And now the point is that since the denominator is just a single term, uh, this can be thought of as a power function. It's got coefficient one-third, and then it's x to the power negative one. And this one also has coefficient one-third, and this time x to the fourth divided by x is x to the power three. So we can rewrite the expression uh, in terms of a sum of power functions, and now we no longer need the quotient rule. So the derivative is negative one-third x to the minus two plus Three times the third is going to give us one, and then x to the second. So there's uh, the derivative. It would have been possible to use the quotient rule as well, uh, but the quotient rule is a somewhat clumsy rule, so when it can be avoided, uh, I like to avoid it. So there's the derivative. Uh, so now another example. One that's kind of the opposite of that one. It's an example where it doesn't look like the quotient rule applies, but it does. The derivative of tangent x, uh, and this one at first glance doesn't look like a quotient rule problem, but when you write it as sine over cosine, then you can see that the quotient rule can be applied. So in order to figure out the derivative of tangent x, we have to assume that we know the formulas for the derivative of sine x and the derivative of cosine x. So the derivative of sine x is cosine x, and the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So assuming that we know these formulas, but that we don't know the formula for the derivative of tangent x already, uh, the derivative of tangent x is commonly known as secant squared x. Uh, but in order to see that, we can use the quotient rule on sine over cosine. So according to the quotient rule, uh, we have to take the derivative of sine over cosine. We get the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. divided by the bottom square, so divided by cosine squared. <clears throat> so again, that was the bottom function, which was cosine, times the derivative of the top function. The top function was sine, its derivative is cosine. And then minus the top function uh, times the derivative of the bottom function. And I did not write the derivative of the bottom function correctly. The bottom function is cosine x, its derivative is negative sine x, right there. Um, and then the denominator is cosine squared, the bottom squared. Now the, the nice thing about this is <clears throat> that the numerator simplifies greatly. You have cosine squared here, and then double negative makes plus sine squared. So you have cosine squared plus sine squared in the numerator, and then divided by cosine squared. Now here there's two ways that we can go, and we end up with a nice identity uh, as a result. The, one thing we could do is we could say that cosine squared plus sine squared is 1, and so we could get 1 over cosine squared, which is equal to secant squared. And this is the most commonly known uh, derivative of tangent x. The derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. But another direction we could have gone here was to say, I really want to cancel the cosine squares. So you can write it as cosine squared over cosine squared plus sine squared over cosine squared. 
Now you can cancel the cosine squared and get 1 plus, and then sine over cosine is tangent. That's how we started this off. And so sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared. So we get the nice identity that secant squared x is equal to 1 plus tangent squared x. So again, the most common uh, form for the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. But an alternative form is 1 plus tangent squared x. And so we have a, a trig identity in the same vein as sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. We now have 1 plus tangent squared is equal to secant squared. Okay, so there's a little look at the uh, quotient rule. Uh, thank you for watching.